Hello, this is Ben from Ben's Kitchen and Garden, and today I'm showing you a recipe for an herby tomato and chickpea salad. I'm starting off here with chickpeas that I'm cooking in my Instant Pot. I use a vegan chicken broth to season them, but you could use onions or carrots or vegetable stock if that's what you have. I like this, this is nice, it's convenient, but all I'm trying to do is cook them in something really flavorful. So whatever you have on hand would work fine. I soaked these earlier in the day, but I ended up overcooking them a little bit in this video. They were in this Instant Pot for about 15 minutes. You would probably cook them for a little bit less if you soak them more if they were dry going in. Now onto the tomatoes here. So these are all tomatoes from my garden. I have loads and loads of tomatoes in my big bag there that I just biked home with. And they're all different conditions. So I sort them, I touch them, I feel them all. It's something I really enjoy doing. But a lot of these I'll use later on or for some other use. So right now I'm just going through, seeing what's ripe, seeing what's ready to eat, and then seeing what has damage is considered a second or needs to be thrown out. A lot of these tomatoes that I'm bringing out of this bag here have splits in them or large cracks from water. So we had storms in Madison about a week ago, and you can see on this tomato here, there's a big split going down the side. Now there's a little bit of a delay, which is kind of interesting. So we had storms a week ago and I picked this fruit on this day and just now that water's catching up. So oftentimes these can taste really waterlogged and soggy. These ones that have water splits like this, this big crack in them. So I'll skip these. This one was fine, but oftentimes they taste just soggy and they can almost taste fermented too. So we'll go through all these tomatoes here. There's another split for you. There's a whole bunch like that and organize them and then pull some out for the salad today. Okay, so chopping up these tomatoes. I have this little knife here. It's got a serrated edge on it. I like this knife because it's just kind of fun to use. You could use whatever knife you had. I'm gonna go through and look at a lot of these tomatoes that need to be used right away. So that have big cracks or splits or just kind of nasty in general. I'm gonna try to save as many as I can. If you had nice, perfect looking tomatoes from the farmer's market or your garden, then you wouldn't need to cut them like this. But I'm just trying to work around and use as many of these as I can. So one thing I do notice is that a lot of times folks do not use enough of the heirloom tomatoes. These tomatoes have a ton of flavor throughout. So that core is not always super present. So what you'll see is I'm just going around and just kind of going through the outside, working my way towards the center. All this stuff is usable here. And for this salad, I just wanted into bite sized pieces. So as I work towards the center where that core is, I really am only just gonna cut off the very top where it's hard and not very pleasant to eat. The rest of that is totally usable. And look at that, it's gorgeous. It's ripe all the way through and super juicy. So for all of these, I'm just gonna slice them up into bite-sized pieces, which will look very different depending on the size and shape of the tomato, which is great because it adds a ton of texture to the salad and makes each bite just slightly different.
Now onto the herbs. This is Lovage, which I grow in my garden. This is a super, super pungent, uh, flavorful, but also pretty intense herb. I think I used a little bit too much in this salad, but also really enjoyed it the next day when some of those flavors mellowed out. The one thing I'm doing with this lovage, which I rarely do, is picking the herbs. So I'm taking just the leaf off there and just using that. That stem is really woody on this herb, so I would not use it, but you could use whatever herbs here you had on hand. So basil, dill, cilantro, I'm using parsley and lovage. Anything would work really. It's just something to add a nice bright flavor to those tomatoes and chickpeas. So the parsley, I just cut off the bottom and then kind of fold it over and do a rough chop. There are a lot of videos on chopping parsley. The one thing I like to look back on as I'm watching myself cook is how dull my knife is. You can see that I'm kind of mashing those herbs, which actually works all right for this salad. Uh, this is not <laughs> perfect fine chopping of herbs here, which is totally okay. And I'll use most of the stem here. It's totally fine in this salad. One red onion, which you can see here is incredibly hard to peel. This is from the farm I work for. I really like raw onion, raw red onion in these applications. And I think it just adds such a nice pop of color as well. All right, now bringing it all together. So these are the chickpeas that are cooked and slightly cooled. They're actually not fully cool yet, and you'll see it in a second. I put a huge drizzle of olive oil on them, and then I dress the salad, so salt and pepper. I really just want these flavors to be produce focused, to be summer focused, so I'm not really gonna dress it with much more than that. A little bit of heat from those chickpeas are nice because it mellows out all the other flavors, especially that lovage, which was a little bit woody, as I was saying, a little bit tough to chew on. But you can see how gorgeous this is. This keeps really well in the fridge for a couple days, and the flavors just keep melding together more and more. So there it is, herby chickpea tomato salad. I garnish mine with a little bit of chili crisp, just for some crunchy, spicy goodness. This is delicious, easy, and just tastes like summer. So I hope you try it out. Thanks for watching.